So this right here is the Dell PowerEdge R730, which could be one of, I, I'm not gonna say it is objectively the best, but it could be one of the best value propositions for a home server setup. Uh, for those who need a little more power than something like a Raspberry Pi or an old cheap desktop office PC. This guy right here can be fitted out to, I believe, dual 22 core Intel Xeons, up to one and a half terabytes of memory. It is running on a recent enough Intel platform that it doesn't completely suck. It has enough PCIe lanes to pretty much do anything you really, realistically would ever want to do. You can run dual 300 watt GPUs in this guy off its dual 750 watt power supplies and it comes in at a low low cost of about a hundred dollars for a bare bones system with mine personally being spec'd out costing me about 300 with 120 gigabytes of RAM and dual 18 core Xeons which are clocked currently at 3.6 gigahertz. In today's video we're going to see how I put this guy together, how it, I guess the shenanigans, per se, that I went through getting it working. Uh, a bit of, you know, having a bit of fun with it, running some synthetic benchmarks to see exactly how it performs relatively to more powerful systems and less powerful systems. And uh, ultimately just having a little bit of fun with it, you know? It's not like every day you get to play around with hardware that is on paper more powerful than any system you've ever had to deal with. So without further ado, let's get straight into the build process. Okay, so, uh, bad mic quality because I actually- this server takes up so much desk space that I physically cannot mount my microphone. My microphone usually mounts about here. So, that's a bit of a hiccup. But we gotta get this guy up and running. So, I did put one CPU in it and a little bit of RAM to make sure that nothing in it is dead when I first got it. But besides that, we got a lot of work to do. So, starting off, this bare bones chassis, or not really chassis, bare bones server with 16 bays and uh, no CPUs, no RAM, no nothing, cost me $140. And usually these can be had at about 100 to 120 in the R730 regular variant, or for about 140, which is to 160 ish, you can get this R730 XD, which is a 24 bay system. And you may be asking, why not just get the 730 XD? Two reasons. One, it's ugly. Two, I don't think I'm ever gonna fill up 24 bays. I don't know if I'm even gonna fill up 16, but I knew I'd fill up eight, so I figured, meet in the middle. This was like my uh, golden goose of server hunting, so finding this was extremely lucky, but I was able to find it. So yeah, pulling back our cover here, you can see a graphics card I had in here for testing, which I'm actually gonna out before I deploy this, and the cover. So if we pop this guy off, we can see our pretty much entirely unpopulated DIMMs and our two CPU sockets. Well, coolers on top of the sockets. But yeah. So we're going to pull out the testing memory I had in here that I just had laying around from past projects, because in this system, we're going to be putting two Xeon E5 2697 V4s, which are 18 core, 36 thread CPUs each for a total of 36 cores and 72 threads in the system. These guys right here, fairly good value. Uh, for the low cost of about 35 to 45 bucks per CPU, you're getting 18 cores, 36 threads, clocked at 2.3 gigahertz with I think a 3.2 boost clock speed, which gives for some pretty nice performance for the price point. I paid 35 a piece for these specifically for a total of 70, so that brings our build total up currently to $210. I don't actually remember which CPUs. I think it's this one that has a CPU in the socket. And then this one's unpopulated. Judging by how loosely, yeah, okay, this is the unpopulated one. There it is. There's our LGA 2011 socket. And uh, <laughs> these are some pretty big CPUs. They got some pretty big, pretty uh, densely packed pins. So we're gonna start by pulling out lever one and then lever two. And then once we lift 
that and then we put that back down. These are very like stupid convoluted so sockets. We okay. <laughs> take our CPU, put it in there lined up with the correct corner here. That's in nice. Then we lift this guy again to then place this back down and then put this back down so that this is fully locked in there. And then I need to wipe the probably stock thermal paste off of this cooler so that I can apply some fresh, new, good thermal paste. We can just quickly clear off all this crusty, ancient thermal paste, which will not cool the system in the slightest. Beautiful. Solid copper block there, if I had to guess. You know, you need good heat transfer. These are high, high power CPUs compared to your normal desktop CPU. At least from when this system was made. Uh, nowadays, these probably consume about as much power as the high, as like a high-end i9. But yeah, we're just gonna... Put a little X. X marks the spot on there, and align our cooler, like so. Blindly stick this in there, and start screwing. Awesome. So, to complement our fairly inexpensive CPU setup here, I have 128 gigabytes of, fully, of ECC DDR4 memory, 2400 meg transfers per second, which is the highest the system supports because it's from the dark ages of DDR4, aka like 2015. So the server is old by pretty much anyone's standards, but it's still beefy. I have eight 16 gigabyte sticks so that we can run both of these CPUs with a quad-channel memory configuration because these CPUs support quad-channel and with 24 memory slots, I have more than enough space to put these. So we're gonna quickly click open all of the white memory slots on this board here because that's the ones we wanna populate. And then it's just a matter of sticking 16 DIMMs in this motherboard. So there's our eight sticks of memory for a total of 128 gigs, but we're not done yet. With our total at about 300 for this system so far, it needs one last thing to actually use it. And initially, I plan to run an NVMe card in this guy because it didn't have any uh, piece or uh, NVMe slots and run uh, one terabyte NVMe SSD, but I ran out of money, so I had to source this cheap, probably good enough to last until I can buy the SSD, Dell one terabyte Astro. So for that, we gotta pull off the server's entire solid metal front bezel here. Has a uh, asset tag on it, which I'm obviously covering because I don't really want whatever company previously owned this to be publicized on the internet because I don't think they'd want that either. And then we're just going to slide this into bay one, slot one. Okay, cool, got that in. So now let's go, I'm gonna put the covers back on this guy and we're gonna take this guy down to the rack, mount it, and get an operating system running on it. And well, I have some ideas on how to play around with this first before I actually put it in you know, good use. The cool thing about this guy compared to my older server that I've been using is that you don't just, with the older server I have, you just push the cover off and pull it off. This has this latch as I, you know, was seen earlier, but you just push it down and lock it on. So yeah, let's go down to the rack. Okay, cool. Welcome to the rack. This is my garage. It's a mess in here. But more importantly, we have the old server and in here, the rails from the new one. Okay, cool. Jeez, this thing weighs so much, but we got it 
on the rack, on the rails. Took two people, but that's beside the point. Let's get this ATX power cable here that I've had sitting on my desk for like three weeks specifically for this. Plugged in. And let's get this system booted. So I have some pretty devious plans for this. I'm going to use it for torture, uh, Bitcoin mining, and burning down the planet. Oh, and AI, lots of AI. Let's swap over our keyboard and monitor here from one. Love this sexy ass front bezel too. Yay. Let her rip. There it is, configuring memory. This thing gets a lot louder than the other server. Uh, and by a lot, I mean, this thing is barely audible on normal operation. I'm assuming, but I'm assuming here. This is like the normal operating sound. Alright, F2 for setup. Let's get into BIOS. There's BIOS. Information. Power HR 730. No, it doesn't. 128 gigs DDR4 ECC. Uh, I don't need memory testing. Processors. Obviously, we have both of them loaded. Okay, here we go. 2E5, 2697, V4s, and uh, both at 18 cores, blocked at 200 gigahertz. Let's get Windows installed on this. Let's try and see what we can do uh, in a Windows environment before I get an actual server OS on this and use it as a server. Yep, that's Windows, if I've ever seen it. Let's see how long it takes actually. So I, I have no clue if there's anything on this drive. I bought it used because I don't need longevity out of this drive, I just need it to post for, like, you know, run Linux for like a month, and then it's going to get replaced with something way better and way faster and more reliable. Windows 10 doesn't have SAS drivers when it does I forgot my hoodie. So this is Windows Server 2025. I'm not a big Windows 11 person. I hate Windows, modern Windows, pretty much. Anything past 10, too much for me. Uh, standard evaluation, desktop experience. I want a bra. I want to be able to use this like Windows. Come on. Uh, this is evaluation as well, because I'm not paying for a license. That sounds god awful, actually. Install and keep nothing. Get up right here. Now we do a little. Do a little more fucking, you know, little goddamn more fucking Windows Server finally installed. So we're gonna give him my personal information. We have a desktop. So open up some display settings here and at least see if we can get a bigger, a greater resolution. Not gonna happen. Optimizations for windowed games. Oh no. Fuck off, I don't want the server manager, dude. I just want task manager. <laughs> That's a couple processors. It's a little bit of memory. Our SAS drive, the ID rack, and Ethernet. Yeah, there's all our CPUs. 32 cores, 72 threads. Can we get some form of display driver on here? Let me see the speeds and the ads too. I mean, it's all right. It'll get me by, I guess. Like, I mean, it's nothing special, but it'll get the job done. 
you know, it, it'll get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're running at like 30 degrees. Um, I can't see all of them. <laughs> it's processing all the textures right now, so we have to wait, I think. Oh, here we go. CPU multi core. Weird, it reads as server 2022. Can we beat the M1 Ultra? Probably not. Twelve eighty three. Oh, it dropped a little bit. I'm gonna let it run its course for 10 minutes, so I'll time lapse it here. $14.47. For a $300 server. Fuck it, $14.69. Okay. So it outclasses a Threadripper, which is 32 cores. A 32 core Threadripper, 2998WX, slightly under a 24 core 48 thread Xeon W from the 2019 Mac Pro, it looks like. I'll take that as like, that's pretty fucking sick. Obviously, synthetic benchmarks don't really mean much. Uh, Real-world performance is what I'm looking for. So we're gonna get Linux installed on this guy and actually like Get it set up Get me into the boot menu. I need Arch Linux. I use Arch by the way In case you were uh, curious, I use Arch <sighs> I'm home. I'm home. I never have to use Windows Server again. Thank you! Thank you! Oh, thank God! Okay, I desperately, desperately have to finish this up. So let's reboot because my SD card's almost full. My fucking, I'm on my last camera battery. We gotta do a shutdown zero. Dude, it'd be so cool if the camera could focus. Welcome to Arch Linux. There we go. We have random garbage graphics card, 72 threads, fucking 36 cores, 72 threads, clocked at 3.6 gigahertz on the boost. Zoom in a little bit here. And 128 gigabytes of RAM. This bad boy can open Chrome tabs. Suck it. So yeah, um, with that, we're gonna cut, uh, I'm gonna stop the video here so I can actually start setting this thing up for real world usage. With that, thank you all for tuning into this one. It's been a very fun one. I've been waiting on this for a while. I've been very excited for this guy to show up and all the parts for it. Uh, I really hope this kind of like inspires others. So, you know, like, if you ever want to get a home lab setup going, these things are so cheap, they're so good. Great value proposition. If you're, you know, into home lab, if you want, like, pretty much any kind of, like, powerful system to offload tasks onto, even. And, uh, with that, thank you all for watching this one. I'm gonna be configuring this thing into the night and then some. And have a great day. I'll see you all in the next one.